Hello and welcome to this Adobe Illustrator video where we will be discussing everything typography. There will be two parts to this assignment. The first part will be creating a poster with either a numeral or a letter that you will enlarge as the visual graphic for the poster. Before we get started, I've placed a link in the description to this typography board of inspiration. There's a lot of interesting examples here. So on the first project, I've used this one as a reference for practicing how to create this style with this reflection. So part of learning design is learning how to see how other people are creating and using type. So this is not going to be an original image that I could copyright, but I wanted to use it as an example so we can explore how to use some techniques to achieve the similar style. For this exercise, I've created a Google Fonts folder in the Resources folder. And this is where I've curated a list of serif and sans serif fonts that I want you to choose from. I would like you to only select two font families, or if you really find a good reason to use three, you don't want to use more than two or three fonts to keep the piece cohesive. So those font files are here where you can download and install those. I've also created a preview document so you can view these fonts more easily. So this shows the difference between what a serif font is and sans serif. And here are a couple sheets showing what a headline, a subheadline, and some body copy paragraph text would look like in these fonts. And these are the sans serif font selections. If you do want to download them directly from Google Fonts, it's really helpful and easy to see and search for the fonts, which will show you the different font weights and some examples of different sizes. Also included in the resources folder is a typography anatomy PDF. And thanks to Martin Silvertent, he has created this guide that shows all the different parts of typography letters, as well as ligatures and some terms for numerals. So these are the two styles of posters that I'd like you to choose between for this part one. And some of the skills we will be practicing with this is adding and manipulating type, installing your fonts, changing the font sizes and letting or line height, learning the difference between point type versus area type, typing on a path, typing in a shape, and using some of the distort, transform, warp, and effects to create something like this style. So as I mentioned, please only choose two of the font families. You can use the different weights within those families. And the mandatories for this first poster will be to include one large letter or numeral, a headline or large text such as the date or day. And I would like you to include an example of type on a path such as this little badge and any supporting details for instance, this poster has information such as the weather details and day, month, year, and time, as well as just some compass direction details. And then up to you on what color palette. I would prefer you stick with two to three colors just so it doesn't become too chaotic. So these are a couple of other color palettes I've reversed out. And then if you do choose on this first poster to include paragraph copies such as this one, there are three placeholder generator websites I've included or feel free to choose another online article, story, or book. So whether you choose the placeholder text for this first poster, you will definitely want to use placeholder text for the next part of the exercise, which is this typography layout. So let's get started with this first poster. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and you can see how I was exploring some of those different fonts and previewing what this numeral looks like in these sans serif fonts. So I like the modern geometry of Futura or very similarly this outfit and this actual column versus this railway is quite wide. So I chose a portrait view and you're welcome to choose portrait or landscape for this or if you'd like to do a square. But for the vertical format, a taller, a little bit narrower font was a better choice. So let's get started creating a, I will call this kind of a card or poster. So I'm going to create a new artboard. I will be working in the Essentials Classic Workspace, and you may want to expand this right column of palettes. So let's just get started with the type tool up here. T is the shortcut for type, and I'm going to type in a value. And with the black selection, we're going to hold down Shift 
and scale. Or you've got the character palette here, which shows your font size, or it may be more helpful to go to window, type character, which will open this multi-tabbed palette for character and paragraph. You may want to select show options in the flyout. So that way we can see the font size, we can see the letting height. You may want to go back to the typography anatomy page where I did specifically call out the terminology for each of these settings. So let's look back at our list and I'm going to make this the outfit type. So once you have that installed, you can select and let's go with outfit regular. I did note down some tips. So it's going to be easiest if you start in a monochromatic way and then add color later after you've got the main layout. Always keep a working copy of the live text and also the live strokes should you need to edit those at any point in the future. It's great to keep a copy. And one rule of typography is to not stretch type. So always scale your type proportionately, holding down shift as you click and drag to scale. And command zero will get you back to your artboard. So with the black selection arrow, I'm going to hold down option and shift as I drag this off the artboard. Or you can do a command C to copy and a command V to paste and just move it off the artboard. Let's go ahead and change this text to paths so we have the outline of the shape. So go to type and create outlines or the shortcut is shift command O. So now the text is no longer editable. It is a shape. So depending on which one you're doing, you can either cut the type to create the reflection or you can do a copy and reflection. So let's look at both really quick. If we do a right click, transform, reflect, we're going to reflect this over the horizontal axis and we want a copy so it doesn't change our original. So there would be a copy. Or if we're going to cut this, we can draw a rectangle at the point where we're going to cut it. And with our black arrow, select both objects, go to window and open the pathfinder. And we are going to do divide. So now it's broken this into pieces where the rectangle intersected the eight. It is currently in a group if we open our layers panel and we can ungroup it by either going to object, ungroup or shift command G. And now we have these pieces. So I'm going to delete the extra rectangle. So we just have this bottom piece. It might be a good idea to make a copy of this too. So I'm just going to do option and drag a copy. And what we're going to do next is grab the eraser tool, which is shift E. And you can see the brush size is quite large right now. So I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys. I just turned on my key caster now. But you can use your left and right bracket keys to decrease or increase the size. And you may want to zoom in. And I'm going to make it pretty small. And we're just going to drag through the shape to create some slice marks. And you may need to undo Command Z. So now with all these pieces selected, you can select them all this way with the black arrow and then shift to deselect the other shape. And now we're going to go to Effect distort and transform and tweak. And with our preview checked on, we're going to look at changing the value of the horizontal and not so much the vertical. So I'm going to go with 28%. And now I'm going to go to effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and just increase this value. You can play with that a bit. I'm just going to look at my reference again. So if you need to edit any of those, you can go to the appearance palette and you can adjust the tweak here and also the Gaussian blur. If you wanted to, you could also erase more pieces. So grab the eraser tool. I'm going to decrease the size even more and just run through that again. That piece looks a little weird. So I might use the eraser tool to completely cut part of this. And this is kind of a sharp transition. So you may want to play around with that, like copying this piece maybe, and paste in place with Command F to the front. And that may help blend it a little bit more. And you might want to drag and copy that piece. And maybe you want to reflect it so it doesn't look so repeated. And that was a right click on the object. And maybe you erase them again, just to make it a little bit different. So that's looking pretty good. There's still a little bit of sharp area, but for now that's going to work. I did add a background to this. 
and even a rounded corner, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to grab a rectangle tool and this is an eight and a half by 11. You can choose a standard size such as that, or maybe 11 by 14, any poster size, 16 by 20, up to you. And then go to my swatches panel. I'm just going to work monochromatically right now. And then either in your layers panel, you may want to organize your layers like we did in exercise five by creating a background layer and you can click and drag the order of your layers. So with that rectangle selected, I can select and move that color to the back and you may want to lock it so we don't have to worry about moving it. So definitely feel free to organize your layers if it helps keep other parts of your design organized. So some other copy I've added to this was a day and the month and year. So with the type tool, I'm just gonna click and type, let's see what date that was. That was Wednesday. Up to you on if you use proper case or uppercase. I liked how I laid it out kind of like a card of this information. So I'm just gonna do that again. And you can grab the type tool again, or you can just copy the existing text with option or copy and paste. And this is where we may wanna start looking at the font weights. So in our character palette, you can see We've got regular, we've also got thin, and some of these other ones in my bold. For the most part, I rarely use black. That's usually a little excessive, so bold would be as heavy as I would go with the font. And then, as you can see, I've created a hierarchy with this poster. So when you look at just the poster, the first thing that catches our attention in hierarchy is the number. And then second in the hierarchy is the month. And then either temperature and day are pretty similar. And then you start getting into the minute details, such as the weather stats or the time. So I want you to think about and notice these things on how to imitate the spacing. Make sure you've got plenty of space around the largest number. Make sure it's centered on the artboard. Now that we have both the number and reflection, we probably want to select all of this and either make a layer for it, which you can lock, or group it, object, group, and then lock it. This would be locking just that group. But also with that group, what I was going to do was center it on the artboard. So align to artboard, and then I'm going to do center horizontally and vertically. Now it's much more centered. So you can scale the type. You can also change it in your character palette. And use your alignment tools for this also. Or you may want to open, if you have the Pathfinder, you should have the alignment tools also included. And let's do the year. T is the shortcut for type. And maybe I want to align all of the text using the paragraph palette, which is either up here or in the palette. And we're going to choose left align in this case, and then align objects to the left and work on the spacing. So go ahead and include some details such as this, maybe some little dots or lines that may enhance it. Something I also want to note on this little weather icon, let's look up an icon. The noun project is a great reference for finding icons. So let me show you a couple ways to create an icon such as this, or maybe a combination of a couple. So let's go ahead and right click, copy image, open up your Illustrator file, and let's go Command V or Edit Paste. And you may not have to zoom in or out. And I'm gonna scale that. So we have a couple options here. I'm gonna show you both ways. Let's convert this image into a vector object. And to do that, we're going to go to Window, Image Trace, and this is going to give us all sorts of options on converting this image into paths. So one thing I like to do, especially on a silhouette or icon, is to ignore white. You can turn on the preview box, which is really helpful. So you can see the initial trace. And now we're going to fine tune this by turning the noise way down, turning up the paths. And you can see it's also getting much better on the definition of detail. And then the threshold is how thick those black strokes are going to be. And then corners, you may have to just play around with that until it looks smoother. Now I'm going to do expand, and that's located either up here in the info palette or over here in the right, it says expand. And since we ignored white, it's going right to this black, the new shape that we just traced. So now we can scale this as a vector object, and it has grouped all the separate pieces. So now let's look at an instance where we may want to build this cloud shape. So I'm gonna start with an ellipse, 
And I'm going to copy that, holding down Option and Shift. I'm going to scale this to create a little variety of the sizes. And now I'm going to place a rectangle here at the bottom to flatten it out. And if I select just the corners at the bottom with the white selection arrow, I can shift and select multiple points and use this corner radius to round them. I'm going to shift select all of those. And we're going to go back to the Pathfinder and use the Unite Shape Mode. So now we have one object with all those shapes. And I can switch the fill to a stroke and adjust that now. And you may want to adjust the stroke um, cap and corner so now let's look at how to make the sun shape. So we're going to do an ellipse and a line. So there is a line and I'm going to want to rotate this. So R gets us to the rotate and I want to rotate around the center of this circle. I'm going to zoom in. So if I'm on the rotate tool, you can see as I hover, there's a tiny descriptor that says center and I'm going to option click. And this is where we're going to rotate the line and make copies. However many lines you want to be on this circle, you're going to divide that into 360. And you can actually do the math right here. So let's say 360 divided by, let's do 8. I'm going to hit tab, return that value, and then I'm going to do copy. And like we did in the last project, we're going to duplicate that action with command D, which you will also find under object, transform, transform again, command D, that shortcut. So command D until we get the full range of those rays. And now what we can do with this cloud object is bring it to the front, object, arrange, bring to front, and you're going to want to grab the same sample color of your background. And you may want to delete or adjust these other lines that are extending out of the cloud. Up to you. So I'm just going to grab this one, go back to my artboard. You may want to close some of these palettes. And let's just give a temperature. And there is an option within Illustrator to open your glyphs by going to Window, Type, Glyphs. And here you can find the degree symbol. And then continue adding your other information or other details such as this. And you might think about how you can integrate color in the little details. Part of this last mandatory, after you've included the headline and subheadline text, we're going to look at how to type on a path, which we may use to create something such as this little badge icon, which also includes my name and would be a great place to put your name. So let's copy how I've created this. First, grab your ellipse tool, which is L for shortcut. And now I'm going to reverse that into a stroke. And I'm going to copy this ellipse, Command C, and paste in place, Command F. And I'm going to scale this, holding down Option and Shift. Or if you're having any difficulty with that, you can just resize one corner and then select both and use your alignment tools to center. And now I'm going to be ready to type on a path. And to do that, I'm going to hold down on the text tool and I want type on a path. And you would think that you would type on the top area to get this top half. However, it is a little bit reversed. So we're going to click on the bottom center and I'm going to type in my name and I'm going to need to select that whole thing and downsize the character. It's kind of nice that you can preview this and you may have to manually type in a value. And I also want this to be centered. So with paragraph, we're going to do align center and you can see that it's kind of close to this top border and I want it to be centered on this path. So I'm going to double click on the type tool and it's going to bring up these options. So we like the rainbow effect. Now we're going to go to align to path center and turn on our preview and this is going to help center the text on that path. You can also see if we flip it, it's going to be upside down. So let's keep it unflipped. I'm going to make this text uppercase like my other one. So in the character palette, I'm going to turn on all caps and let's choose something with a thinner weight, not too thin. That's going to be too difficult to read. I'm going to make this even smaller and I'm going to increase the tracking. All right, now I'm going to copy this text. So with your black selection, we're going to do Command C and Command F to paste in place. And now I'm going to rotate this by holding down Shift. We're going to rotate this 180 degrees so it is upside down. And we're going to double click on the path text tool again. And this time we are going to want to flip it. And we're going to use the text tool to click into this one. And you can type a location or any other information. 
And what I also added was a couple of small dots with the ellipse tool. And I'm going to do a copy, paste in place, command F, and I'm going to arrow over till these are aligned. If you do want to check, we can go to outline view, which is view outline or command Y, and that will allow us to really increase our accuracy of aligning. So I'm scrolling over and now command Y will get us out of outline view. So here's where we've been creating this new shape. You can adjust the stroke or the size. Maybe you want to copy paste in place and resize this so there's an inner stroke, kind of like a badge. And then I'm just going to include some text for the state and change the tracking. So I'm going to select all these items and do a group, command G. And I want this to go to this artboard. So if this artboard is highlighted with this darker black line, I can click on my object and do a line to bottom to help us get closer to where we want this to be placed. And here we can scale it if we want to or make any other adjustments. So I'm going to leave this option right here. You could see some of the other details that I included. And let's look over at this other option of part one, which includes some text in this shape. So again, I was looking at some different fonts. If I hit tab, you'll see all of my palettes are clear. So you can toggle the tab key to get a better view of your workspace. And this is where I was exploring those same fonts, this time in the serif options. And I thought this G was really beautiful. It's the Baskerville old face. But you can see how some of these are more suitable than others, whether it's the space we're creating here. If we're going to add paragraph text, we want to look at the shapes of these letters. So I thought this Q is also very beautiful. And maybe you want to choose another letter that you could either add text in this area or in both of these areas. So let's go through how I added this G with the text area inside of it. If I get my text tool T, I'm going to type in, let's do another letter this time or two letters actually. You can see I still am on the uh, all caps. So I need to turn that off. And I'm going to type in the Baskerville and scale this up. And I'm going to make a copy of this because we do want to keep the live text. And we're going to change this to outlines with Command Shift O or type Create Outlines. So if you go to one of those websites that I've included for placeholder text, I'm just going to select one of these and go to this one. As you can see, it's the same copy that I used. You can also show whatever other ones they have available. So I'm going to copy this paragraph text, Command C, and come over to my document. I'm going to create a text area, which I'm just going to click and drag. And I'm going to adjust the font size to 10 and the line height to 14. And I'm going to select all of that and do Command V to paste. We can see this is currently centered and we do have some extra returns between paragraphs, which I'm going to want to remove because I'm going to set the paragraph distance with all of it selected. And by going to paragraph, which I have the, the character pal open or up here in the top, you'll see paragraph. And I'm going to increase the space after the paragraph. So you can see as I do that, any hard returns will have this spacing below it. I usually use something like seven or eight. So now is a good time to explain point type versus area type. So right now, this is area type. We have a text box. If I grab the type tool and just click, that is called point type. And so when I hold shift and enlarge or change the size of this text, there is no wrapping on the text. So whatever I type is going to just keep going and no wrap versus this text box is wrapping the text. So if I copy this first line, just copy it and paste it, command V, it's going to make it point type. So if I sample this large text, there's no wrapping to it. It's just continues on one line. Now we can manually make returns if we click into the type and hit return on the keyboard or shift enter. We can create manual returns that way and then change the letting height. So there may be instances that we use point type like that. The difference, whenever we click on the text box and use shift and drag a corner, it does not change the size of the type. When I hold shift and resize this text box, 
or just without holding shift, I can change the text box and that's going to have fluid type where it automatically wraps based on the box. Versus if I don't hold down shift as I'm scaling this type, it's going to start stretching it and it's just compressing it, which we do not want to do. So that's breaking our rule of do not stretch type. So we're going to have to start over with this text or click undo several times until it's back to normal. So we can change the type in other ways here by manually changing the font size. But for larger bodies of text, you want a text box, which is clicking and dragging to create a text area. Now there's also an option that you can convert the point text to area type. To do that, we go to type, convert to area type. And now we have a fluid text box. And you can see by this red plus indication that we have text overflowing which we don't want if we want to have all of our type visible. So we'd have to increase the text area that way or double click this bottom middle square to increase the size of the text box. And as you can see, we would need to remove our manual returns. From the other side, we can also convert this area text back into point type by going to type, convert to point type. So there is some flexibility on how you handle type. If you do want to keep the current wrapping, but increase all of it proportionately, you can use the scale tool by either clicking on that tool or tapping S on the keyboard. And you can shift and drag a corner to scale it. Or if I undo, you can double click on the scale. And here we can see and manually increase the size. So each of these does have its purpose. All right, so this G we already have converted to outlines. And what I want to do is I want to add text within this oval. So I'm going to click into this shape until I can select only this ellipse, or you can manually draw an ellipse. I'm just going to do a copy, Command C, and click until I'm out of the shape, and Command F to paste in place. And now I'm going to scale this from the center, which is Option, Shift, and you can resize this to give some space between the letter and you may need to stretch it. And now holding down the type tool, you're gonna select area type tool. And we're just gonna click on this top middle anchor point. And as you can see, it's placed some placeholder copy. And you can either copy and paste your text from the website directly or from text on your artboard. And it does take the previous character size. So if that's really large, you may wanna change it down to like 10 and 14 for the line height. I am pasting in my text. And then as you can see, there is some overflow. So we have a couple of options. I do like that it's ending on an end point, such as this question mark. So what I may want to do next is with my black arrow, I'm going to click on that red plus box. And if I click elsewhere, it has taken the rest of that text and put it in a similar shape. So for now, that's OK. I'm going to draw a shape that fits this area now. And to do that, you can either create the shape using shapes and the pathfinder, or you can use the pen tool, which is P and you can click. And if you click and hold the next dot, you can create smooth points. And I'm going to just quickly draw the shape and you can edit those points later if you're not happy with the initial one, or you can click to remove the suggested next path. You may want to convert this to a stroke so you can see it better. That's going to work for a rough sketch right now. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this text. And now I'm going to click on that red plus sign again, and I'm going to tag it and click on this new shape. So I'm going to need more text to fill the space and click into this text area and paste. And then I'll let you decide how much copy it's okay if you do end it early, but I do want you to end on a period or question mark as in this case. So one thing I'm going to want to do is I need to resize this so I can fit more of the type. And I can adjust it whether I want to add more type or make this current type fit. And maybe you want to sample this other text if you like that style. You may need to change the tracking a little bit too, depending on where that word wrap is. So if I zoom out, that is fitting the space really well. And you can adjust any of these anchor points with your white selection tool or you can grab entire shapes and scale them. So as you can see, when I scale this, it's not scaling the size of the type because it is an area text box. So I would need to use the scale tool in order to keep the wrap the same, if that makes sense. I'll show you one more custom shape real quick and let's 
This time let's just grab the brush tool because we can use that too. And now I'm going to join this because I don't think I joined it completely. So command J to join or object path join. And with some of the text, copy it. And with the text tool, just click on a point and paste. So there's another way that you can quickly create a shape with type in it. And maybe I want to scale that a little bit more. I double click on scale. You can see in live time what that's going to look like. So here I've chosen the headline and I pulled out the first sentence or two to create a subheading. And then in this particular section, this block of type, I have used the paragraph with justification. So it fills that entire column versus a ragged. So this is a ragged edge and under paragraph, if I do justification, it will fill the entire rectangle, which is really great. And you'll see that oftentimes in newspaper columns. We're going to talk more about columns coming up next.